Welcome, gentle listener. I am Baldemwood, your faithful servant, and I wish to introduce you to the important factions, forces, and faces of the Warhammer 40k universe, the grim darkness of the far future, where there is no time for peace, there is only time for war. If you are a regular gentle listener, then I would ask that you check that you are still subscribed and have notifications on. If not, then do consider subscribing, as then you will not miss out on ongoing narratives, if that sort of thing appeals to you. Now, I have to inform you immediately that I will be away this week. Well, technically from yesterday. Hence the smaller entries from today through to my return. I have snacks set up for Monday and Wednesday, but nothing more than that at the present. Alas, the recent events have been enervating and had put a massive hole in my output. So I'm taking a week off to visit family and regain my mojo, so to put it. All things being equal, on my return, I should be able to get some good long entries out on some of the more interesting segments of the setting. So do please bear with me. And today, we are to deal with a tragic tale indeed, and one that touches very close to my own heart for I consider myself a true son of the angel, a Sanguinius. And thus, the tale of Captain Erasmus Tycho is a dark one indeed. For each and every blood angel, and all of those within their successor chapters, secretly hold this one cautionary tale as their most harrowing. For Tycho was indeed the best of the best, seemingly anointed in the future of the chapter. Yet even he was not proof from the dangers of the curse that runs through each of their veins and lurks within the shadows of their souls. Now, let us hear the tragic tale of Captain Erasmus Tycho. And so, as usual, for the very basics, let us lean on existing wisdom. To quote Captain Erasmus Tycho, The Fallen Star no matter how many imperial lies our actions save, how many worlds we rescue from the clutches of monsters, and how much selfless glory we cover ourselves in from one war zone to the next, none of it changes the bleak truth that we are cursed. And when the black tide rises and drowns all that we are, does the legacy we leave behind excuse the monsters we become? Does it make our sacrifice worthwhile, as we are told? Or is it all swept away, rendered meaningless by the same bloody flood that takes our sanity? I just do not know. Captain Erasmus Tycho Brother Captain Erasmus Tycho was once the greatest strike leader the Blood Angels had ever known, rumoured to be Dante's protégé and chosen successor. Now he stands as a grim reminder that even the chapter's brightest and best are not safe from the clutches of the Black Rage. Tycho took command of the Blood Angel's third company when his predecessor was slain during the Second War for Armageddon. The former sergeant swiftly proved his mettle, orchestrating the rout of Boss Gracker's speed freaks and recapturing key defensive positions all along the River Charon. Heartened by their successes, the third company pushed on, striking at the orc supplies from Armageddon Prime. It was on such a mission that Tycho and his company were ambushed. Though the Blood Angels triumphed, their captain fell victim to an orc weird boy's psychic assault early in the battle and was left for dead. Through luck or sheer belligerence, Tycho survived but the after-effects of the terrible psychic onslaught had paralyzed half of his face, freezing it forever in a rictus grin. Tycho's obsession with fine aesthetic taste and beauty was as great as that of any other blood angel, and to him such a fate was worse than death itself. So it was that bitterness and rage began to creep into Tycho's once pure heart, opening the door to the pent-up anger that lay at the heart of Tycho's very being. Unable to bear the pitiful looks of his battle brothers, Tycho ordered the chapter's most revered artificer to forge a mask to cover his disfigurement. 
This simple act seemed to grant Tycho a measure of peace, and for a time he regained his old composure. For the remainder of the Armageddon campaign, the Blood Angels' third company stood in the thick of the fighting. Tycho directing their efforts as he had in the early stages, though none could deny that an increased fervor stole over the captain whenever he tasted the tang of orc blood upon the air. In the wake of that great campaign, it swiftly became apparent that all was not right with Tycho. No longer could he relax in the hallowed halls of the chapter's fortress, for its beauty served to remind him of his own mutilation. Dante reluctantly assigned Tycho to permanent battle duty, yet even there he was more violent of temperament and attitude, and his tactics became audacious to the point of foolhardiness. Finally, when Gazgul returned to Armageddon, and Tycho revisited the war that had seen him mutilated so many years before, his mind snapped. Lost in the depths of rage, the captain took his place in the death company. At the head of a seething mass of raving, delusional battle brothers, Tycho led the assault upon the breach at Hive Tempestora. Though his charge carried the day, and though the ferocity of his assault has since become legend, the captain fell at the last, on the planet where perhaps he should have perished long before. End quote. Alas, as I'm rushing to try to get all this done before I leave, and also because I honestly could wax on lyrical for a very long time, but it wouldn't actually add anything to your knowledge of the background. There is not much else to be said about the great son of the angel, and thus I shall say goodbye. I have been Baldemort, your faithful servant. I hope you've enjoyed this brief introduction to Captain Erasmus Tycho. If so, then please do consider liking and subscribing. If you do, then hit the notifications button, as I would not want you to miss out. If you see the worth in what we are doing, then do also consider joining our Patreon, or giving the video a share if that is beyond your present scope. It would be a great boon, but rest assured, I would say a lot of my entries are very long indeed. So do please forgive me this tiny break. Now, no matter what you do today, do try to make some time for fun. Toodaloo.